Hello there and welcome to the Last Time Film Podcast, where we talk film, TV, games and all that jazz like there's no tomorrow. My name is Tom and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, John. Hello there. General Kenobi, how are you this week? You were a bold one. I am doing ah. great. Um, uh, so good news, everyone. I have been good watching news. films. Yay. Oh my God. What a, what yeah. a twist. That, nev- that never happens. Uh, well, well, it's just that I, I went, you know, not watching Ooh. films because... Oh. You just Sorry. got a notification. Got a notification. Uh, yeah, uh, that I've just been working really hard, but also I'm glad I've just been watching films because I feel like that's the thing that I really need. Mm. Um, but yeah, this week has been a great week uh, to watch films um, and to, yeah, it, it was great. I yes, love watching it's, it. It's, it's, it's good to have everything kind of coming back as we, re- as we remembered it once. Um, such as cinemas and stuff. And hey, we'll be talking about, uh, so this week we're going to be talking about uh, Bad Batch episode seven, Loki episode one. But next week and the week after, we're going to be getting into some new releases. We've got Luca, which is the new Pixar film next week. And the week after that, yeah. we're doing Fast 9, the latest in the Fast and Furious saga. Yes! we got Black I'm Widow so a couple of months after that. Sp- months, a couple of weeks, sorry. Uh, Space Jam a couple of weeks after that. Suicide, we've got loads of cool stuff coming. I'm very excited. I'm very excited as well. And uh, yeah, I'm so, so excited for Fast and Furious 9. Mm. Uh, it, 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 it just looks great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I've, I've, I've still got to watch 8. I haven't watched 8. Or Hobbs and Shaw, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. We will we'll get to that um, this week, or I don't know, because... Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about when, when, when we can watch it. Um, but I guess what I just got to say first and foremost before we get started, we hit 200 subscribers this week. What a what a twist! Wow, what well, that's that's a twist right there. It really uh, is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, thank you, uh, 200 for subscribers. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was so I sound that was, enthusiastic. Yeah, you sounded so unsure. Like, thank, thank you. I, um, two, two hundred, uh, m- maybe. I, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm just looking at it because it's just like a bit uh, unbelievable. But um, it's pretty unbelievable. Two hundred and four subscribers. Wow. Yeah. Let's not let's let's uh, not let's not think about the roughly hundred and sixty inactive ones. <laughs> oh yes, but the ones who are listening. You are the real heroes. You are Thank the you. real heroes. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for... That's what know. heroes do. Yes. Ah, that's ah. a reference. I understood that oh, one. That, that's a, that's a wow. reference. You know? Wow. Oh, speaking Ooh. of wow, we'll be talking about Loki. We will be. The latest Marvel. It's been, it feels like Falcon the Winter Soldier ended like last week. I feel like oh, I've had yeah. no time off. It, it's it just like feels like... Loki already. It just feels like that we watched it yesterday, but now we're just on to Loki and it's on Wednesdays. To be honest, that's good. I, yeah, I, you no, know, it's something cool. to look forward. It's something to look forward on Wednesdays. Yeah, it, you, know? you know, it kind of breaks up the week a little bit. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice. It's very really yes. nice. So I'll get us jumped. I'll get us jumped. I'll get us started, should I say, straight into the news oh, um, with some DC news. But not in the way that you might expect. We have casting news for DC's League of Super Pets, in which there will be a whole range. This is an animated film with a whole range of uh, uh, animal heroes. So, for example, we're getting The Rock as Crypto the Super Dog. We are getting Kevin Hart as Ace the Bat Hound, and then other. Uh, actors and uh, comedians such as Kate McKinnon, John Krasinski, G- Vanessa Bayer, Na- Natasha Leone, Diego Luna, Keanu Reeves, and this is going to be coming out in May next year. I mean, I mean, this is definitely quite the quite the cast. What 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 do you think? This, uh, I I wasn't expecting expecting this. Uh, uh, you know, it's the League of Super Dogs. Yeah, League of Super Pets. Super pets. That's not. Super that pets. means anything. Anything's on the table. That could be like a gorilla. You could have. You could have gorilla grod. Oh, technically, it could be a pet. It could be a villain, though. You, no reason why not. Yes. Uh, so uh, yeah. Um, 
I didn't really. Well, I used to watch that show. It was a DC one, but it it had Superdog in it. I don't know. Uh, I know. I I have no idea what you're on about. I I, I don't know. Rec- I, I don't remember. Recall that. I was watching. You- I was young and I watching I was watching this on CTV. Mm. Oh, I don't know. And it was exactly like that, but it it was about this just super dog and and it was a it was related to DC. But oh, really? um yeah. Wow. And I, I I just remember it. I have no idea. Do you remember do you remember League of Super Evil? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> For those of you in, yes. in the UK who who were old enough watching C C B C um yeah. league of super evil the greatest villain team in existence yeah it's it's just a very enjoyable show though it is that was great yeah and uh yeah the, the voice cast as well um mm. you got so Dwayne I, johnson for crypto kevin do. hart as eight mm. ace ace um ace i mean i mean keanu DC's, reeves keanu reeves we got keanu reeves yes. who will he be we'll never know um but i, I think this is it this is interesting because you know, DC have kind of been doing a couple of, you know, like animated. They did Teen Titans go to the movies. They did a uh, Lego Batman movie, you know, and now we've got a uh, league of super pets. I mean, DC are really covering their bases here. You know, they're doing everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see what they're going to do with it. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's super pets. I mean, <laughs> It is what, indeed what, super pet. I, I think the the villain's gonna be Gorilla Guard. I, I think it could be. I mean that makes sense. Um I, I can't think of any other I mean actually to be you could have Cheetah. That's a, oh wait, wait, who was the killer moth? There was a superhero that could talk to animals. I didn't know who, but he was in DC and he was in Infinite Crisis, but he can talk to animals. Um... So I, don't know. I yeah no I don't I don't, I don't know who, who that is um I'm just thinking I just thought of Squirrel Girl who is obviously Marvel yeah um, do you remember they were gonna make a Squirrel Girl film oh yeah what with, happened a, to with that? Anna Kendrick I have no idea that was a very yeah interesting time I remember yeah, yeah I remember you could... um unexpectedly in the comics uh Squirrel Girl defeated Thanos did she yeah why. <laughs> That's weird. I, I, I don't know. She That's somehow defeated Thanos like in a fight. I I don't know. That's that's so strange. Um I remember in the first Lego Marvel superhero games, you could play as Squirrel Girl and like her power we just like you just throw squirrels at people. Yeah. And uh th- yeah, that was weird. <laughs> yeah. What a what a weird what a weird thing. We also got our first, so like a couple of weeks ago, we got um the uh, first kind of images for Masters of the Universe Revelation, but we actually got our first trailer this week. Uh, did you watch the trailer? Yes, yes, I think, yeah. yeah what did yeah. you think? Uh, it looked, yeah, the the animation, I said it again, was very smooth. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, a lot of action in this trailer, and I felt like immediately yeah, a lot of it was a lot of so yeah. cool and like fluid, and yeah, you know, loads of like like powers that I thought were you know yeah. really utilized in a in a fun it way. Look, and it just looks, yeah, it just looks very clean, and, uh, and yeah, you, it just looks like a different, totally, totally different show. You know, mm. the one back in. The original one, yeah, yeah, it, uh, it just looks like it's taking those concepts and taking it to the next level. I mean, like the trailer was literally the the, the song they used in the trailer was uh, "Hero," uh, obviously, and it's, and it's just like anything that is using that, you know, it's like giving me Shrek two vibes. Anything that uses yeah. that to such like good effect, I think, is you know super super successful, and I think it just looks like so much fun. Yeah, it just looks like a very enjoyable show. Um, mm. And I think this is going to be a show that, you know, the the, the, the people who watched um, the original might, you know, appreciate this. And, you know, the younger generation might appreci- appreciate this as well. So I, I love, I love, love, love the original cartoon. So, like, 
I'll definitely be watching it. And I and I, I really hope that other people do too, because I think there's like potential for some really cool stuff if it continued on to season two well, or how, wait, however. Um, it says it's part one. Yeah. Um, so as far as I kind of um can tell, I think it's gonna be something like a uh like a war for Cybertron. So th- last year they did the the War for Cybertron trilogy, which was kind of like each each the each like part was each like installment was split into six parts or so. And that was a Transformers thing in like a new kind of setting. So I, I think maybe they're gonna be doing something like that where they kind of release like two or three parts and, and and they want to make like the one story that doesn't kind of go on for two seasons but I, too many seasons but so i assume that they have a part two planned at least yeah yeah i'm very mm, yeah excited for it yeah it looks yeah. great it's 23rd yeah, of july it's cool 23rd uh, of july. yeah that that sounds right that's the day i go away for holiday god damn it hopefully i have hopefully i have time enough to download it before i leave um but we also got um announcement of a new lord of the rings uh film this is uh, called lord of the rings war of the rohirrim uh it's going to be an anime uh and is going to be centered around helm hammerhand who i didn't hear about this yeah um so uh, oh. it's going to be centered around helm hammerhand who was the king of rohan who created helm's deep um, oh right and it's gonna be set right. way before the 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 films uh or just like the main lord of the rings story uh but is going to be kind of uh in similar vein i, I think they're using similar imagery and iconography uh philippa boyens who worked on the screenplay for the lord of the rings films uh is going to be working as consultant so it's definitely gonna be kind of like intertwined some in some capacity with the films like what do you think about this kind of concept of looking at like the past of Rohan? That's that's actually a thing that we we didn't actually explore explore around in uh, Lord of the Rings. But I'm ta- I'm glad that they're taking you know some uh, details in the stories you know to make them into a into a story or an anime. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool actually. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great to have because obviously. You've got Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Hobbit trilogy. You've got this anime, um, and then you've got like the show, and they're also. I enjoy that everything is different in a in a sense that like, unlike Star Wars or the MCU, you don't have to consider everything canon. So if this really really sucks, it doesn't really matter because you don't really have any kind of you know obligation to watch it or. You know, yeah. there's no, there's, yeah. this, this won't impact the quality of Lord of the Rings or any of the other stuff. So, you know, this can go as far out as it wants. It can be really wild and crazy or it can be like totally by the numbers. Um, you know, it's not something like you you need um, like the latest Marvel film to, to be good because it's going to be important for some capacity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think it's cool to see, like, how, what Rohan was like, because, you know, they've got a pretty impressive uh, army with their, like, horses and such, but, like, they they definitely struggle and are, I don't know, I wouldn't say, they're not as grandiose as Gondor, for example. Yeah, 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 I see what you mean. Mm. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, to explore more of the character, but I well, I'm hoping they're not going to mess things up, but mm. you know, yeah. It's like why? It's like why? Why beat a dead horse when when you know you can do cooler things? If that makes sense, you know. Yeah, I see. Be- beating, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Beat that just, horse. Just, yeah, it's just reminded me of a a moment in, uh, in Resident Evil where there was a dead horse, and. I had to go in this house, mm. but then as uh, then I heard something in the background, like behind me, and then the ho- the dead dead horde disappeared. It was just dragging. It was just getting dragged by something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not terrifying at all. <laughs> yeah, and then apparently there was a a werewolf. So G- good. Anyway, we love uh, the werewolves. Amazing. Um, 
So yeah, our final piece of news is uh, Aquaman news. Uh, director James Wan had revealed the title for Aquaman 2, and it is now officially called Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Now, what this means, you know, this could be anything. No, There's no real plot details revealed other than, you know, King Orm will be back in some capacity, you know, various cast members returning and characters. Uh, but, you know, is the Lost Kingdom the kind of... Uh, hollow earth that they uh the the um arthur discovers his mum is uh trapped in is it like one of the seven kingdoms that they kind of explore you know is it something we didn't know like what like this could mean a whole lot of things what do you what are your thoughts uh wait i we know okay i i remember what you said but then you just form into that one, one giant sentence. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> I, I sometimes with long talks or something, I just get it's really, it was really zoned, zoned out with my, my just like constant draining on. That's fine. Um, uh, James so Wan uh, revealed the oh, James Wan, there Aquaman we go, two. No, Aquaman and, and the Lost yes. Kingdom. Yes, I remember now. I'm so sorry. It's sorry? just that with long sentence. Or something I just get in, into a little daydream and trying to see what I'm it's so like, sorry. I it's like you, you know, it's like you know in space where Daisy's sitting in the interview and, and, and she's just sitting there and they're asking her questions and her mind just starts to go like like that. Um no, I I just don't know what happened there. I was just That's quite all right. I know what you said, but then uh, right, so Lost Kingdom, yes. Uh, James Van returning, that's interesting as well. Uh, uh, you know, I wonder what he's going to do with this, uh, with this. Is he going to find something new with Aquaman in this mm-hmm. Lost Kingdom, or uh, they're going to are they going to continue the story? You know, something you know that could be exploded at Aquaman, Aquaman's mother. So yeah, so yeah, well. Wondering- he- I think, at the very least, you know, the visuals and the direction of Aquaman were so incredible, you know, like all the all the visuals and all the different kingdoms and the, the CGI and the underwater stuff was just so cool. Um I think I think it's I think it's great that we get to um get to have James Wan doing more. Of that, I keep on wanting to call him James Gunn, but obviously a different director. James Gunn, too many. This is two, two James in in DC. Too many Jameses. Yeah, yeah. I, I love I love James Wan. Obviously, he did. Yeah, um, James Wan is great. Uh, I think director. he did some some of the some of the Conjuring films. I've seen the first one. But obviously, he did Fast and Furious Seven, which I think he is did. the he best did. of the saga by far. Ah, uh, he he just did it. It's spectacular so perfection yes yes mm, masterpiece so <laughs> uh it's a shame that you won't do more the fast and furious uh films mm, i wish you could true. do it yeah but hey he, didn't um i think uh, vin diesel did say recently that he wants to do two more so 10 and 11 and then finish so uh- I think Fast and Furious might be winding to it. I mean, whether or not they'll do spin-offs, I don't know, because I think there was talk of a spin-off led by Michelle Rodriguez. Um, oh, yeah. Something like that, yeah. So, but I think they're, they're planning to kind of wind that down a little bit. Mm, interesting. Interesting indeed. Shall we talk mm. about the Bad Batch episode seven? Yes, episode seven. Let's go. Yes, Battle Scars is the name of this episode. Mm-hmm. And oh, oh boy, this one and was a. Uh, it was. I really liked it. <laughs> yeah, this is a very, 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 very good episode. You know, yeah. it's something that we needed mm. in you know in this matter of you know like. What we talked about in the past, where's Captain Rex, or what will happen uh, with other other characters uh, as well. So the last few weeks was a bit slow, but there were good yeah. episodes, but a bit slow. But this one, this one was a turning point for the whole 
series i don't know but the first episode well i I hope i hope i hope it's a it's a it's a turning point because uh, what i think the show has struggled is really you know creating stakes with the characters without having the empire on screen you know i thought by far the best episodes have been you know when they've been dealing with the the empire when they've been exploring crosshair or how the empire is tightening its grip in varying uh, different capacities and then in this episode what you really got was you know the ca- the, the character stakes you, you finally got the 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 climax of Wrecker's whole you know head thing uh, with the chip activating and and, and the whole uh, motif of seeing how Rex has changed since the end of the clone wars how how the events of order 66 and and the revelation of the chips affected him i think it's just it's really good to see you know the characters have to deal with a threat within themselves if that makes sense yeah it it was like a bigger threat this time so yeah uh so last week we were talking about what what's going to happen with wrecker Mm. so yeah, yeah it's just... definitely been a slow build up, but I think it was worth seeing him totally, totally lose it. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I thought that was a great scene, you know, when he was like hunting down all the batch and, um, you know, not even Omega could kind of like <laughs> snap him out of it. Uh, it does make me think, though, because presumably the rest of the bat, we only saw Tech get his, get his chip out, but presumably the whole batch has had their chip removed now, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's interesting because, you know, we saw the return of uh, Captain Rex mm. and we're like, yes, it's Captain Rex. Finally. Finally. We Where have you been, Latin. Rex? You were in the trailer. You were in the trailer, but we didn't know where you were this whole time. Hey, I want to uh, say, though, he takes him to Bracca. People who play Jedi Fallen Order will know that Bracker is the planet that you that you start the game on, and immediately yes, yes, I got. Exactly. I was just so happy. I was like, "Oh my god, yes, it's great." But it, but you know, on a storytelling standpoint, it's interesting that we see that already the Republic. You know, it's been like a matter of weeks, maybe months, since the Empire is. You know, the Republic has reformed the Empire, and the Veneta cruisers. You know the the stuff that once were like the pride and joy of the Republic and like a sign of their army and their power, is now just nothing. You know, just like on a scrapped planet. Like so, f- the Empire has already started to try and like you know assert itself over the Republic and and you know forget everything that was beforehand and be like, this is how yeah. it is. This is how all it, it should should have been. This is how it's going to be. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh... Those those are great moments that I really liked uh, in this as well. Um, um, Return of Rex, obviously, uh, and um, oh yeah, at the end of the show. Uh, no, not the end of the show. The end of the episode. There was two people, right? Um, yes, there were uh, scrappers. Uh, scrap- contact the empire. Contact the empire. Yes, the the empire. Um, so. I'm wondering where. Oh, there was a noise that was in the background. Just I don't know. Uh, uh, There's so... someone in there with you, John. You are not alone. <laughs> it's a ghost. Uh, so um, yeah, um, it's going to be interesting of how the bad batch is going to, you know, um, going to do without the ch- chips. You know, the empire yeah. is going to find out. I, I don't know. So I feel like. No, I hope that, you know, because obviously we only saw Tech get his... Wrecker and Tech have had theirs removed, definitely. We didn't see Hunter and Echo get theirs removed. But I hope that they still have to, because there hasn't... You know, there hasn't been really... The chips haven't had a huge effect. You know, you had the one scene where, where, you know, Wrecker went crazy, and that was a great scene and a terrifying scene. But, like, we haven't seen... And just like the 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 stakes of the chips have now just completely been eradicated, um, and unless you know this like this knowledge comes back in some capacity, whether that means that they will 
try and get crosshair back or something. I don't know, but I think that I would have liked them there to be more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, more more of the things that was you know a bit more uh, catastrophic or something, mm. you know that could really really affect uh, the bad batch. So, uh, but yeah. this I thought this was uh, you know maybe a warm up or something you know yet to come. Yeah, um, I think there's something's gonna. I reckon the Empire are gonna come next week. And they're gonna have a they're gonna encounter Crosshair again. It's been long enough, you know. We haven't seen Crosshair for this. Uh, as of next week, it would have been five episodes since we saw Crosshair. So I think it'd be great to see, you know, the Bad Batch come back into contact with their old uh, friend, and you know, have a little, you know, back and forth, and maybe well, because obviously now they have the facility on the, on the cruiser. Maybe they could remove Crosshair's chip as well. Yeah, and that'd be really interesting to see how he reacts to that. Yeah, he'd be like, oh, God, no. Yeah, because like, uh, he's done some horrible stuff, you know? He has. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, what the Empire really need uh, Omega for. You yes, know? we still don't know much about, like, obviously she can shoot a bow, um, but we don't really know much about Omega's um, speciality, her, yeah. her skill. Like, what is she... Uh, I, I can't remember who says it, but somebody... I think it could maybe Color Crane in episode two says that the Kaminoans never clone without purpose. So there's definitely something about her that the show is kind of trying to tell us that we should, you know, believe is important. Yeah. And uh and another thing as well, like um she doesn't have an inhibited inhibitor chip. So Yes, that's true, she doesn't. So or maybe she does. Ooh. Um ooh, ooh, ooh. Like, I I I think I don't think that there's something that's going to go on with the Kaminoans. And I I reckon the series may, well, whatever, whenever the series ends, I reckon it's going to climax with the Kaminoans, you know, kind of rebelling against the Empire, uh, you know, kind of like activating order, whatever, you know, 67, which is to like 60. over... I don't know. Order, <laughs> order sixty nine. Um, order, order like whatever. The, but they activate something new, which means that the clones turn on the empire, and the empire is then forced to wipe the Kaminoans out. You know. Um, yeah. One of the things that I thought was interesting is Rex. He at the end of this episode, he's like, "Oh, we have to fight." You know, I still got to be in the fight and stuff, which is great. However, at the beginning of Rebels, w- well, when we see him in the first point of Rebels, he is on a planet in the middle of nowhere, living with two of the clones, completely out of the fight. And I reckon that something has to happen. You know, yeah. something, something has to happen there. for, for yeah. them, for, for him to stop fighting. And maybe yeah. that something is that the Empire just kills all the clones and all the Kaminoans, you know? I think that'd be really interesting. Yeah. I'm wondering what's going to be the future of the Bad Batch in next upcoming weeks. So. Yes, well, I guess we'll because Loki's starting, obviously. Um, so we are not going to be talking about the Bad Batch now until the end of the season. So we're going to come back in the end of August. We're going to talk about the whole season as a whole, but we won't be talking about it week from week by week anymore because of Loki starting. Um, so yeah, this is going to yeah, be the last be time we talk about it in a in a few weeks. So we'll we'll kind of talk about the ending of it all then yes but for now what what how would you what what would you give this episode out of 10 um i would give it an eight nice or i don't know yeah no i think i agree i think i'll give it an eight probably yeah i'll get yeah i get yeah, again the show still hasn't been as good as episode one episode one was so good <laughs> you know and i just want it to like I want to have another episode that's like, oh, damn, that's, you know, that, that is like top tier Star Wars. That's exactly what I want to see. And we haven't really had that just yet. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be a bit slow, but maybe we're going to see something, you know, that completely, 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 completely changed. I don't know. So, mm. yeah, I'm excited. To Me see. too. Now, shall we talk about... Loki. Loki. Jinx. Oh, I see how it is. So, Loki episode one. Uh, one. 
Glorious Purpose. Um, what did you think? This one was a very, very, uh, I need to stop saying very interesting. This was interesting mm. uh, because uh, the, the show of the first episode just opened a lot, a lot of ideas. Mm. And we just saw like a very different side to Loki and um, and it really, you know, it was quite emotional for Loki, mm. and and we saw a different, you know, perspective on you know on Loki, you know what he does, and and uh, and we just got an introduction of the T TVA TVA uh, Time Variance TVA. Authority. Mm. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of, you know, new ideas in this episode that we've never kind of explored before in the MCU. And I think, um, you know, I think it's really interesting that the idea that the Avengers created so many kind of uh, time uh, anomalies or variants, um, you know, make for extremely intriguing, uh, a a very intriguing premise for the show, Uh, particularly, you know, it, it immediately explains some of the weirdest stuff in Endgame that didn't really make sense. Like, you know, if if the timeline isn't affected by going back in time, how come old Cap is there at the end of Endgame? You know, how can various things happen? There are inconsistencies there. But this kind of explains it, you know. The Time Variant Authority just, you know, they let, thing, they let those things happen in a certain way. So I think immediately that was cool that... Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that's not quite and, as annoying as it once was. Yeah, and there was a lot of moments, um, you know, that really uh, stand out. And I was a bit worried that it was going to be uh, one one division or something, you know, mm. that could, you know, um, trying to be different, but not really. You know, I'm not, I'm not hoping, and not hoping that. It's not going to be as same as one division as the ending, you know. Like they're going to have a huge battle. Yeah. Uh, but I really want to see a different side to Loki because this Loki was just fresh out of the um, the Battle of New York, and uh, and there was a lot of stuff um, that really, you know, see saw him weak, but also like saw him, you know, emotional uh, and and. I really like the moment where you talked about that DB Cooper and it, it was Loki. And yeah. That, it, yeah. Like immediately the first thing that Loki does when he lands is, you know, he says like, Oh, I'm a Loki of Asgard and I'm burdened with glorious purpose, which is exactly what he says in Avengers. You know, that's exactly the thing that he says to kind of be like, everyone bow down to me. So like, it's interesting that, Yes, this is the exact same person. Um, and I thought the best, by far the best moment of the episode was when he, you know, looks into his future. And oh, yes. All these emotional moments. And he has, he, I guess he sees his own character development and he really is affected by it. You know, Owen Wilson's I- character, Mobius, presents oh, these good. questions and he kind of says to him, why are you like this? Why do you want to rule? Why are you like mischief? If you're the god of mischief, why are you doing this? Yeah, why do you kill people? Yeah. And that's very and, interesting stuff. Yeah, that's a very interesting thing that we, you know, we haven't really thought about Loki. Like, why does he do these? And, you know, with villains, they always have a motivation. But with Loki, we don't really see a motivation, but we do now. And uh, uh, I, yeah, I think that was the thing that we didn't, you know, but he's a great villain. Uh, Loki, you know, like in Avengers, uh, I'm, I wish there was more villain, villainry, you know, in a lot of other movies. But um, yeah, I got. Yeah. I think after Avengers, I started to get more and more bored of Loki. What oh, I, really? What? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think if he'd have died in uh, Thor. Ragnarok, uh, yeah. no, not not Ragnarok. Sorry, the Dark World. If he'd have died then, I would have thought like brilliant he has a wonderful arc of you know betrayal redemption blah 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 obviously he doesn't and I, and I just got really tired of him and and I think pairing him up with this you know incredible like 
wacky time travel stuff is what I would have liked to see. And I, and I think in that case, I am more intrigued by Loki than I have been in a long time. Yeah, However, I feel like... Go on, oh, yeah, sorry. go on. No, go on. Uh, I feel like, you know, Loki wasn't, you know, that important after uh, Avengers, you know, mm. what you said, like, he's been a, a, a boring character. And there wasn't a lot of moments, you know, that really stood out to Loki, but in... So, uh, well, yeah, there wasn't really um, something, but... I'm glad that Marvel has decided to look on Loki because I feel like that was a character that, when really, you know, wasn't um, well thought in the movies because I mm-hmm. feel like he's just a character that just is there. But in Thor Ragnarok, he was a, had a little uh, purpose to it because you know he uh, actually helped uh, Thor mm. and he actually helped you know the um, you know the Asgardians uh, to go on uh, on the ship and uh, yeah and there, there he, was sacrificed, a... he sacrificed himself for you know yes yes he did, he did. I love I, I really did love his death in Infinity War I thought it was the perfect end for him you know trying to have the one more kind of trick and 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 you know I mean I could talk about how incredible Infinity War is but I think you know, Thanos having his initial display of power being to you know, beat the shit out of the Hulk and then kill Loki is wonderful. Um, but it's particularly in Ragnarok, there isn't, you know, it felt like Taiko Titi had a very specific story he wanted to tell. And obviously Rag- uh, Dark World set up this whole, you know, Loki's king thing. And they spent as little time as they could to kind of like, quickly get him off that have Thor figure it out blah 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 um get him on Sakaar so they can do the whole planet Hulk thing and that's great and all but the the emotional moments are so frequently undercut with comedy and they don't you know have as much impact which is really unfortunate because you know it felt like Loki therefore had a bit of a rushed arc in the end um and yeah. I, I think now we've got you know five five, six hours to do a Loki show we can give him like a full fully defined kind of arc yeah and there was like a lot of stuff you know there was questions to be raised in this one but Mm. you know I feel like this show will put a lot more understanding of you know of Marvel you know what they're what they're trying to do Mm. and uh and I, I I really like the the, the TV, you know, like the mm. the old technology, but you know it's new, but you know it's old in that one, you know, like that has yeah, it has that's that cool a- alien vibe, you know, alien, yeah. you know, like the the shit they have, and uh, yeah, and- it's it's like it's very sixties, and it's kind of like oh yeah, we are the most advanced techno technological people in the world, but we're still using typewriters and like old TVs and stuff, and it's like I like that aesthetic. I think it's really cool, and. Uh, and there was a lot of uh, references or Easter eggs in this mm, one as well. It was. Um, yeah, so apparently uh, in one scene where Loki tries to uh, escape, uh, you see someone walking out in the portal or something, and it looks like a resemblance of Peggy Carter, but we don't know it's actually Peggy, Car- uh, Peggy Carter uh, walking out. Uh, because, but- well... This this whole thing, there's a a, a, a a a video, which is kind of like a whole load of exposition where, you know, the clock. I can't remember what the clock's called. Oh, Miss Minutes. Miss Minutes, right? So Miss Minutes kind of tells uh, Loki and the audience exactly what's going on. These people, you know, control the flow of time, and they want to stop there being a multiverse war you know, and, like, loads of different, like, uh, uh, contradicting factors. And basically, I think that's where the show's going. I think whoever the antagonist is, whatever happens, is going to culminate in the multiverse being uh, exploited, uh, being, uh, you know, released, and then that's going to feed into Spider-Man No Way Home. It's going to release into, uh, uh, you know, go into Multiverse of Madness, What If?, uh, and this is going to be the catalyst for all that. Kevin Feige has said that this is the most 
uh, important of the shows so far. And I think that is why I think that was definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, it was it was it felt like a, a Chekhov's gun moment. You know, don't say that there's a danger of the multiverse being released if the multiverse isn't going to be at least in danger of released at some point, which is I think is what's going to go down. But um, yeah, I I I think this was actually my least favorite series opener so far. I think I actually preferred One Division's opening two episodes to this. Um, Wait, really? Yeah, my problem- I thought those I thought those two opening uh, two episodes were a bit slow for me I, yeah I, I, yeah i wasn't i wasn't a huge fan of them but I, I i think they had style they did the the 50s and 60s thing very well blah 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 but i think in terms of loki um there just wasn't there was so much kind of clunky dialogue expositional you yeah, know the pacing but- was very slow you know, I didn't need any action scene, but I feel like there could have been a little bit more to it. There was, you know, I don't feel like it was very well put together, shot. Like, for example, we'd, we've got this 60s aesthetic, right? Let, why don't you really lean into that in the way that it's being shot and the way that it's being put together? Um, I don't know if you read the latest, if you've read the latest Empire yet, um, but in this Empire magazine, it talks about, you know, uh, British creators and one of these people is Kate Heron I think her name is who is directing this show and she talks about like you know her pitch for the show and how it was really cool and wacky and so it sounds like she has a really good grasp on what she's doing but it was it could have been put together so much better the music was you know there's nothing special about any of it and I feel like it should have been more special it should have felt more grand and interesting and there was so much of it was ex- expositional and set up. And there were those amazing scenes where Loki has the character development, but they were fleeting. You know, the D.B. Cooper scene that you mentioned, I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really great. However, it it had no bearing on the plot. It was just like, ah, oh, here's a fun little adventure. And it was like, well, I don't care unless it has like, you know, some sort of impact on the characters or something like that. You know, they don't really lean into the fact that it's like, you know, why are you doing, why did you do this particular thing? That's just an example. And we already have examples in the other films. Did you just I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, it just, it just I, felt like it was a lot of kind of like plodding along, you know, setting stuff up, um, and and, and yeah, I feel like there was waste potential there. Yeah, I thought there was. Yeah, I agree. There was. I was just a lot of things, you know, to to go over with, uh, and um, it is definitely yeah. an interesting setup though. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a, there's I, a lot like of stuff to... that I think has, has has big potential. Yeah, like to explore maybe different time variants, you know. There could be like moments that they can really explore. Um, mm. Obviously, that we saw that in the trailer where Loki goes to uh, a destroyed version of uh, of New York. Yes. Uh, we saw that. And I'm wondering what the, what other things they're going to explore. You know, like, what if, you know, they explore, you know. Uh, what if? A different ending to Infinity War, you know, mm. or or to Endgame, or something that you know that what Loki wanted to do. So yeah, what's interesting about that is that you know you've got obviously this episode was very expositional and very slow paced, but I'm hoping that means that this series, this episode walked, so the rest of the series can run so far ahead. You know, um, that is so like intriguing the, the fact that you know as you said we can go and explore different um moments in time you know different like very uh, variations on outcomes and stuff i think that could be very interesting and um what i want so there's the scene with um the infinity stones right this guy casey has like a whole load of infinity stones yeah remember that yeah um, yeah, and there's also mention about how like everything happens in in time exactly how the TVA wants it to happen. Uh, it you know, and I and, and this kind of all brings the fact that this being the case, nothing really matters. Does I don't know if that if that kind of makes sense, but you know, if everything is if the, if the TVA decides how everything should happen then this kind of definitely reduces the stakes of a lot of things that happen in the MCU. Yeah. 
And I think I wish there was yeah, I wish there was a lot of stakes with that. Yeah. Yes. And so I hope that the show destroys the TVA. You know what I mean? Because oh. I feel like if the TVA is around for this oh, long, yes. then you can't, you know, you can't have because like let's say that the the a character makes a really impactful choice, you know. Yeah, and that, that that instead of changing the course of the of the plot or their character arc, it's just another part, or it's just what the ta- TVA want them to do. So I feel like what I feel that's going to happen is the 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 multiverse is going to be released and the TVA is going to crumble, and you know, and therefore they can play around with it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like what you're saying. I feel like the TVA is going to get destroyed i think because that could possibly set up for you know future things as well possibly spider-man 3 yeah. uh, or uh, uh madness of multiverse maybe i don't know but <laughs> multiverse of madness no <laughs> uh <laughs> well yeah that's what everyone else is on every- that is what is on everyone's mind that's all everyone cares about you know more than anything else it is you know they've promised us the multiverse and you know we're getting well we're rumored to get the multiverse in spider-man so like let's explore that you know yeah yeah uh but hopefully they're not going to do something um one division uh yeah. but something well that- i mean i think um, this is gonna ha- i mean falcon and winter soldier it didn't, it had theories, but I think One Division was very theorized, you know? And I think this show is going to be similar because we did get an image of like a devil like being. And I think immediately my first thought was, is that Mephisto? Oh, you know, yeah. in the church. Oh, there was this kind of devil. I oh, think that, no. I think that we're going to no. be getting a lot of theories again. I'm not going to go on social media. <laughs> I am not. Because I don't think what, have a everyone, gonna be what everyone was saying on Twitter was total crap. Like mm. everything what they were saying, like I was like, oh, that's that, that's that's that could be interesting. But no, <sighs> I, I don't want to theorize ever again. Now the theorizing. Just no, it, it's it's a dangerous game, I and mean, we all remember Last Jedi and Force Awakens. So many people had so many theories about <laughs> Ray and 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 Snoke, and it's like. It all went wrong, and then we got Rise of Skywalker. So, I mean, I think it's a dangerous game. However, who do you think? Uh, obviously, the final scene we see a villain, an unknown villain. Who do you think that is? Do you think w- we know them, or do you think it's going to be some sort of variant and Loki? What are your thoughts? I think it could be a variant of Loki, mm, or, or, or I don't know. Possibly a returning character that could be like, wow, but yeah. we don't know. But I, variants of Loki. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to see variants in Loki. I think, you know, there's been rumoured that we're going to get an older Loki played by Richard E. Grant. Um, rumours that we're going to see a female Loki, you know, various different Lokis. However, you know who I'd really like to see? Yes. Malekith. <gasps> oh. no, I, know, I know that he's dead, but... And I know that he was literally the worst villain in the MCU. He was so boring. However, in the comics, Malekith is like this really like extravagant, you know, like evil, like scheming, like, you know, dastardly uh, conniving um, villain. He was so, he, uh, it, if you read The Mighty Thor, he's all over it. He's like this evil mastermind. He's like Loki cranked up to 11. And if you've seen Doctor Who or any of other Christopher Eccleston's work, you know that Christopher Eccleston can really be, he can, he can be like mad, you know, and manic. And I think bring back, if you bring back uh, Malekith, they could have so much fun with it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, to mess up with the time stuff. Yeah. I, I'm pretty, yeah. I didn't think of that, but that would be really interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that would be so much fun. Uh, what else? Uh, but yeah, Casey. I think Casey was the um great, great character in this one. Yeah, um, he was. He was. He was fun. He was fun. 
Yeah, it was fun. It's, it's interesting someone who doesn't know what a fish is, and it's like, you know, it <laughs> what really the sh- heck's fish? <laughs> yeah, what's a fish? It's it's like it, it it shows how different, you know, the people and, and the, the world is in the TVA compared to um the world that we know so far. Yeah. Um what else? Uh uh yeah. I agree. I, I think there's a lot of stuff that needs to be covered, but this is the first ep- episode. I yeah, can't it's early it, days. It was, it's- I think it was about the, the same quality as WandaVision's opening, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Maybe but- maybe a little bit better. I don't know. I'd have to rewatch WandaVision because there was more I, I character. Don't, I don't want to watch WandaVision ever again. <laughs> I'm, I, I will one day. I'm going to do it. I promise. I might rewatch it before Doctor Strange. Oh no! Actually, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> God um, damn it! Why? Um. So, what would you give this episode out of ten? Um, I wish there was a lot more to talk about, but I don't know. Uh, I would give it a six or a seven. Yeah, I agree. I think I'd give it a six. Um. Yeah. I think when it's at its best, it gives me like eight or nine energy. Like, you know, the scenes where Loki's looking at his past and stuff, his future. Um, that stuff was great, but I feel like there wasn't enough of it for it to really permeate throughout the episode. Yeah. Um, I'm very, very interested to see what's going to happen in the next few weeks of mm. Loki. Uh, and I, I, yeah, I'm hoping that they're going to recover, not cover a lot of stuff, you know, in the MCU, also surprising stuff as well. So, yes, hopefully this and really also, opens the gates for some bonkers stuff coming going forward. Bonkers. Yeah. Uh, 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 what was I going to say? Gonna, yeah, you were going to say something. I'm so sorry. I cut you off. I don't know what I was about to say. <laughs> no. Uh, no, oh yeah. Oh. So the director of this um, yes. was inspired by Teletubbies. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm not oh. kidding. Oh no. Yeah, I'm. I'm a bit worried, but yeah. You know what? Cool. <laughs> cool, man. <Yeah. laughs> Why not? I'm Why thinking... the hell not? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I'm, I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen, really. Uh, this is Loki, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, right. With, with, with that, let's move on to weekly viewing. Yeah. So, viewing, do you want to start off? Tell me, tell me, yes. tell me what you have yes, watched. Yes, I want to start off with this. Ooh. So, this week, I have finally watched Fight Club. Ooh, nice. So, have you seen it, Tom? I have seen it. So, uh, Fight Club. This was uh, a weird film, but mm. I loved it. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, okay, I want to talk about what just happened when I uh, put it on on my PlayStation. So, I got the film on Blu-ray. And nice. usually uh on xbox or playstation or any any, on the, any other game console that's only the too um you would see the title title of the film and then the picture of the film yeah mm, yeah the main yeah. menu yeah the main or not the main, main menu or like the menu that you know you're yeah. about to click on or something. Yeah, yeah. so not like the blu-ray version but um mm. so you got it but then as i just you know put it in the the, the title fight club was just a full stop just a full stop just a full stop yeah just like okay that that uh, just uh, just a full stop and then the picture was just like a uh, uh and like a uh, an aircraft uh, instructions of like how to get into a position so yeah this was i was like oh okay do i have the right film so i did have the right film so then i got to the main menu but the main menu turned into a rom com. Oh, yeah. I'm confused. Yeah, it, 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 the, the, the main menu is just like, it, like it looks like a rom com. It says "never been kissed," 
and it had everything it had like scene selection play movie setup and everything i was like wait a minute do i have the right film and then it just glitched glitched and just glitched and it just went back into fight club really <laughs> yeah that what? is the weirdest experience i I've, I've ever seen had you recently like, played never been kissed no what that's weird and no it was just a film and Apparently that's just that's a reference in in the film or something, but like that just been glitched and just went back into Fight Club and and <laughs> that's, that's that's a very that's, weird experience to have. That sounds very cool. weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna talk about the film. So right. <laughs> I just want to have that. It was just a very weird experience. So <laughs> the film uh, revolves around uh, by this guy. Uh, we don't know his name yet, so I'll call him the narrator. So the narrator, uh, we revolve around him, and he lives with this guy called uh, Tyler Durden. Mm. And they work together to create Fight Club. Uh, so it's it's a very... Uh, I, I, can't, I need to stop saying very because on YouTube there's someone going, you need to stop saying very. I, I don't know why I keep recommending that. YouTube, are you are you spying on me? Uh, no. So um, the film uh, had a very has a, a very, <laughs> very it's it's you, a curse you're now. Being, you're 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 being very over the top of this. <sighs> okay. <laughs> the film has a uh, interesting concept as well. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. It's it has a great plot twist as well. Yeah how how do you uh, how do you talk about this film without spoiling it? Because it's 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 like talking it's like talking uh, about Memento. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, I remember one time I was in film studies and I had to talk about Memento, and and uh, and I managed to talk about it without um without like spoiling it. And I was so proud of myself, man. Wow. Um, but I I, I want to know have you. Did you know the twist when you were when you watched it? Um. Well, sadly, yes. Yeah, because I knew it some too. idiot decided to post. It decided to comment on Instagram, like on a meme or or, or on you on YouTube. When I was just like, da, 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 da. and it's like, oh, this is like exactly the thing that happened in Fight Club. And then, <laughs> no, yeah, I know you mean it, it's it's super annoying. It's like it's like you it's like people like I don't think I could. Uh... Ever like I I knew the the, the, the twist in um, Six Sense. I haven't seen Six Sense, but like I know the twist already. Like uh, I don't know the twist. Okay, well that's good. Um, in um, uh, bloody uh, Shawshank, the not it's not really a twist, but the ending. Oh uh, yeah, I, I knew I knew oh, that. Yeah, but the ending's great in that one. Oh my god, mm. that's a good ending in Shawshank. What a film. Uh, what a film. Um. I didn't know the plot twist. Well, in Memento, I'm glad about that. Yeah, I didn't that either. completely blew my mind mm. when I saw it. Uh, I didn't know the plot twist in The Prestige. That I was a little well, bit. I was is, a little bit underwhelmed. Uh, yeah, I was underwhelmed by that because the plot twist. I saw it coming. Uh, I didn't get spoiled, but you didn't already you, see it in the film. Didn't, yeah, I, well, I swear you said that your dad said it as you were watching. Yeah. It. Yeah, my dad was talking. <laughs> me, me and my dad were talking about like, hey, wait a minute, that's blah 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 blah. I'm not gonna spoil it. Uh, I there was a very good plot twist in uh, what film? I want to say, okay, Arrival. Have you seen Arrival? I haven't. Right, because that complete in the cinema, it was just a mind blown experience. Uh, mm. because it just hits you like a train. Uh, Inception. That was I don't think there was a there, there was a plot is, twist. There was is, a plot twist. Is there? Yeah, there was a plot twist in uh, Inception. Uh... <laughs> okay, um, we're not going to talk about that, but um, it'll come back. I haven't seen Inception uh, too long, apparently. Um, but yeah, go on. Yeah. So with Fight Club, it. I wish I didn't know about the plot twist because yeah, I, I feel had, like that, I that, when I watched it, I feel like that ruined so much of it for me because so much of it revolves around, you know, the plot twist and knowing it already, you know, 
it takes out some of the suspense that I feel like you should have. Yeah. Uh, I, um, yeah, I, I, it's so annoying because everyone's like, oh my God, this is a great film. And I go, mm, well, I, did, I wish I didn't know the plot twist. But if I didn't know the plot twist or anything, that doesn't really change much of the film because it's great because you've got Brad Pitt, you've got Edward Norton, mm. and they have great they have great chemistry, but they also work together really uh, in this film. And there was a lot of references and a lot of Easter eggs that you see in the film, like some glitches or some some things as well that you know that really stood out in the film. So, uh, yeah, um, hmm. yeah, I I I don't know, but um, the, the, oh, Brad Pitt. Okay, I want to talk about the character of Brad Pitt, like Tyler Durden. He's very very. He's a great character in this one. Um, I, I, Tom, how do I stop saying very? Because now uh, it's replace it, better, replace right? it with really. Okay, really. So, uh, Brad Pitt has a really good character in this one. Uh, he played it really well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He played it really well uh, because, um, it works together with Edward Norton's character and. Uh, the, yeah, again, I'm, I'm pretty good. sure that they filmed the film chronologically, uh, and um, yeah. as they did it, I'm pretty sure like Brad Pitt was on like a like a really healthy diet and like did like a lot of exercise, whereas um, Edward Norton started to like eat less and less and become kind of look start to look sicker and sicker. Yeah. And as you go through the film, it like really depletes of like the uh, the character of Edward Norton mm. or um, everything the, the narrator. And I really like this. Um, I think um, about there's a lot of themes that really it explores, uh, and it really uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. It's it's a film that. Um, well, the thing is, I knew the plot twist. Uh, I I don't know, uh, because there was it had a similar plot twist in the book that I read called Supermarket, and okay, I I, I think I spoiled Supermarket <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. So what uh, would you give it out of ten? Uh, can I talk about the soundtrack a bit? Like, oh yeah, no, of course, of course. Yeah, uh, soundtrack was really good especially at the um at the beginning uh you know we saw like um the mind like going through uh i don't know some cells and it has a really good you know really good introduction because that's how you get into the film like oh okay why why are we in this body cell and that's how you get the audience interested in that you know that uh amount of time uh and that that was quite good you know uh and the performance yeah performance great uh cinematography yeah cinematography was actually really good in this one um because it also reflected to the other things it's a, it's a dark film there's a lot it's of, a dark oh yeah a lot of it's shadow a dark film. it's um, a dark film yeah it's a very bleak yeah. color palette as well yeah bleak and color not, not the it's nicest got... thing to look at <laughs> yeah it's but i think that's the matrix. point it's matrix like you know, it mean. is like it is like the the real world in the Matrix. Yeah, but I definitely, but I definitely think that's the point. So I could, I couldn't really complain about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna get this film. I want to see ten. I mm. don't know, but I wished, I wished I see, uh, saw. I did, I didn't see, uh, hear about the plot twist at all, but <sighs> there was something was about. Getting- there was something about it when I watched it, something that I just couldn't put my finger on what I didn't yeah. like about it. And I'm not I, really, and I, I, I'd have to watch it again, but there's something about it that I really can't put my finger on that I'm not yeah. the biggest fan of. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I can't put my finger on it, but I'm going to give it a nine out of 10. Cool. I am going to watch the film again sometime, mm. but it's something that I really need to think about. But, Overall, 
I'm going to have it a nine out of ten. But great film. Brilliant. It's a very great film. Really good film. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Tom, what have you watched this week? Well, um, I've been reading. I've been reading something for about a month now. Um, and I finally finished it and I just had to talk about it. Uh, so I've been reading Saga, right? So Saga is a 104 issue comic um, uh, by uh, Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. Is that right? Is that right? That's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah, I got it right. Um, and the first 54 issues, uh, oh, 108 issues in total. So the first 54 issues, so the first half of it has been released. Second half, not released, no release date. Um, but you can get the first half in one volume called Compendi- uh, Compendium One. Uh, and honestly, if you if anyone is thinking about getting it, get the Compendium. It's like it it costs you like a hundred quid to get all the volumes individually. The Compendium is only thirty quid. So that's great, that's but it is like a mammoth thing. You know, it's like a brick. It's like it's like six bricks. It's it's very big. Um, and it's a lot to read. And I've been reading it. Um. And it's it's so, so good. You know, recently I've been delving into comics that aren't just, you know, Marvel DC. I've been reading a bit of Hellboy, American Vampire, Descender and Saga. And I think out of all these, I've enjoyed Saga the most. The world it, that it presents is such a, a, a perfect blending of fantasy and sci-fi. And the art is absolutely beautiful. Like everything that comes together with it and the way that it depicts uh brutality and beauty in in different ways is so wonderful and and at the end of the day it's a story about love it's a story about love and friendship and family and and redemption and the way that it it presents these characters who are so complex and have uh you know so many different agendas and the way that they kind of have these beautiful arcs where they will come to um you know either very heavily stick to their beliefs or grow as people and change and, and the vendettas that you know people have you know, on the hunt, but it is a story about all this in the backdrop of a brutal war. You know, it's if by all accounts, there's so many aspects of it that that you know reflect the many wars that we've had in our own world, and it's it, it it's horrible at times. And I think the beauty of it is that it can really be a real ter- tearjerker, while also you know giving you like a sense of warmth and happiness. Um, obviously. The, the journey isn't over. I've only read half of it and I'm going to have to wait who knows how long to read the other half, but it's it, it, it's honestly perfect. I cannot think, you know, it, 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 it takes small moments and it shows how even the smallest decisions can be catastrophic, you know, and, and it, 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 it never kills. It, it definitely has its, its fair share of death, but it never kills characters just for the sake of it. You know, it, 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 it's so good at crafting, you know, characters and having them learn lessons. And obviously it's going to be a while to wait for the next 54 issues, but I am so ready to wait because, you know, it, if it's as, if, if the second half is, is as well crafted as the first, it's going to be incredible. And I'm so, so very excited to see, you know, where this, where this goes, you know, it's like, it's like Romeo, it's like Romeo and Juliet on bloody oh, steroids. Really? <laughs> And on acid, yeah, it's it, it's that kind of classic uh, love story taken to the extreme and presented in horrible circumstances, but done just as well. Um, and I really, really loved it. Um, I definitely recommend it to to anyone who loves comics because I think not only was it amazing jumping off point into the wider world of comics for me, but it was, you know, um, I, I think you could, you know, if you're a fan of stuff like, um, you know, Lord of the Rings or like Star Wars planet hopping fantastical adventures stuff like that you're gonna uh pull a lot of a lot a lot of fun from it um but again it's not always easy to to read i i i feel like as as with as you're saying with fight club i feel like i should give it a 10 out of 10 but like there might, there's probably something wrong with it that i can't you know that i didn't feel yeah. um i feel yeah. like i'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 because you know sometimes uh there are a lot there's a lot going on different plot lines sometimes some of the plots kind of fall into the background and you have to kind of and then they kind of come back issues later and and that's fine but you know it could be a pace a little tighter towards the end i I thought but it's incredible if you know if you if you're wondering 
you know what to read Re really recommend it you know um get that compendium one it's so worth it john you should totally read it it's, it's amazing it's incredible I love right it so um i forgot the name now what you just said saga compendium saga one. there we go saga <laughs> my memory's messed up today I it is it's fine it's because you're concentrating so hard on trying not to say very <sighs> i uh, i don't know it's just like my mind's going a bit haywire anyway <laughs> um what else i've watched so this week uh i watched this in, in college uh, because mm -hmm. i have to do it for work uh, for mm -hmm. my film noir uh i watched sin city hey i watched that for my noir last year brilliant yeah we watched sin city so this was directed by robert rodriguez yes. and frank miller yes uh so I'm I interested. Which version did you watch? Um, what version? I think there are two versions. Really? Yeah. Let me check. Oh, okay. Uh, because I just I think I just watched the normal one. Uh, let's have a look. Um, there are two versions. So there's the There's the restored theatrical version or the recut extended unrated version. I don't so, know what. I don't know. I don't know uh, which one is, is the better oh, one. Yeah. I watched the normal one, I think. Yeah, uh, I think that's the one I watched too. Yeah. Um, so, Sin City. I was, uh, I, I was very looking... I was really looking forward to, do, uh, to watch this film because... It's Frank Miller, mm. uh, the writer of uh, DC Comics, and uh, is a great graphic yeah, novel writer. He, he wrote he wrote all of DC Comics. It's true. Oh my god, he, <laughs> he wrote did, every uh, single thing. Uh, no, he 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 wrote, he wrote really good ones like um, Dark Knight Returns. Mm. Not 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 Dark Knight. He did uh, write Dark Knight Strikes again. again. Uh, just don't read that. Just don't read that. If you <laughs> if you want something to you know to be very very bamboozled or. Uh, you know, confused about what's actually happening, or I don't know, knock yourself out. It's it's bad. Uh, don't tell anyone, it's but bad. it's bad. Uh, but he did great ones as well, like Batman Year One, uh, three hundred. Yeah. Was that him? Uh, was was Year One him? Sorry, what did he write? Batman Year One. Yeah, huh. he wrote that when he was younger, I think, like <laughs> seventeen. Yeah, that's right. Batman, you want yeah. him? Oh, I'm thinking of Long Halloween. Yeah, Long Halloween. That was uh, Jeff, Jeff Loeb. Loeb. Yeah. Uh, and who else? Yeah. So, uh, he's a great writer. Apart from Dark Knight Strikes Again, <laughs> and also I did not know that Frank Miller uh, had cancer for ten years. Oh, did he? Yeah, he had cancer oh. for ten years because he couldn't get back into writing. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So I hope he's better now. Been... We would have seen a lot more comics. Uh, he's alive right now. Uh, we good. would have seen like uh, a lot more comics um, if, if he didn't have cancer. But uh, he returned back into writing when he did the Master Race. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so that's that was very good. So uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So Sin City. Uh, this was a totally different film uh, because it was black and white, it was noir uh, and the cinematography was amazing uh, the cinematography in this is just like completely out of this world like uh, like the colour palette like there was some characters that had like a specific uh, colour on them like there was one girl who had uh, lipstick and you couldn't see like the colour in this one but you saw specific color you know like there was one character who had blue eyes there was one character who was yellow uh like in the yellow uh, thing I, I, one character i think that was it yeah who was bright yellow yeah you uh, got some you got some deep reds in there yeah and that you know that really showed like the, the pers uh, persona of the character uh especially there was like there was a lot of characters who were like uh representing you know, like the noir conventions so like you got the, the detective you got like the criminals the gangsters and it was it felt very noir but 
also comic book like uh, as well because they they were strong, they were powerful as well. Especially Bruce's character who got shot, and there were so many characters who got shot, and sometimes they don't die in this film. I don't think no one actually dies in this. Film. Well, I don't know. Wait, did yeah, um, yeah. So uh, there was one character. Yes. And I was also surprised about there was one guest appearance, and that was Quentin Tarantino, and he directed one scene in this film. Did he? Yeah, I don't remember that. Uh, well, in, in the opening credits, you see his name, uh, Quentin Tarantino, special guest, and he directed one scene in this film. Huh? Who knew? Quentin yeah. Tarantino. Uh, and I love the cinematography. I have to talk about the cinematography. It's just, it's just what the heck. But the other thing as well, uh, it was a bit, I was a bit overwhelmed with everything what's happening on screen, especially some car chasing or something, uh, because it heavily, heavily relied on uh, special effects. Um, and it, it kind of felt out of place for the film. I wish it had been mm. a bit more practical, but like yeah, there's a lot of it felt like there's a lot of green screen in there. Yeah, and I felt that it it did it just kind of broke the reality of the film. Uh, but uh, but the characters in this one, uh, I think yeah, the characters were noir like so. Um, walk um uh, Bruce Willis character, uh, and uh, yeah. And it it was a very emotional film as well, and uh, it, and it really really depicted what Sin City is really like, and um, the performance uh, it was great as well. Uh, the pacing the pacing was a bit weird. I don't know. It was a bit weird in this one uh, because there was a bit slow action, but then it got a bit slow. Uh, and but the one thing that I really loved was the voiceover dialogue and I wish that was used in a lot of uh, comic book films because you know with Batman or uh, Spider-Man or something the yeah, Marvel I feel like this I feel like you know they, they obviously like you've got films like the Spider-Man trilogy which open and close with with narration but like they could really utilize that in comic book films it'd be so cool like in uh, Watchmen. Yeah. And I really want uh, comic books to do that because I want the audience to be in the mind of the character. And it's really hard for the audience to, you know, get into the character without, you know, the powerful or something. Because, you know, like in Iron Man, we see Tony Stark. Uh, but, you know, it'd be really emotional to, you know, have that voiceover, you know, to be in that mind of Tony Stark. Uh, yeah. but and but Batman, Batman's gonna be a very interesting one if they're gonna do like a voiceover thing because it's gonna be so cool to hear that voice, you know, you know, f- like when he's fighting or something. If you read the well for for the for the Batman, uh, obviously Matt Reeves has said that it's supposed to be like leaning a lot on the detective side of it. I feel like yeah. a detective scene of Batman, you know, like searching for clues and and thinking stuff in his head, like in the Batman Telltale series or like in um, Arkham Origins, you know, when like he recreates the crime scene of the death of Roman Sionis' wife in Arkham Origins. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, yes. Like that would be so cool on screen. Yeah. And I really, you know, you know, I... That was missing really about the Batman, you know, having that voiceover. If you read the new Vita 2 one, oh my god, the first opening bit to uh the new Vita 2, uh, new Vita 2 um is it, like Bruce talking about a newspaper column called uh Gotham is, and people would send in words to describe what Gotham is. And I just love love that bit because and I wish that was shown. You know, on screen, like Batman fighting of the characters as well. It like when he's talk uh, doing the voiceover because slow motion. I don't know, but that would be really yeah, cool. Yeah, I reckon. Um, for example, in Batman v Superman, if Batman had a voiceover, kind of like explaining his kind of like his motives, mind, yeah. yeah, his motives. Like that would be really cool. I d- sorry, I don't know if anyone can hear an alarm in the background, but. Apparently, my parents have decided to start messing around with our alarm. 
<laughs> and yeah, uh, and voiceover was yeah. I wish there was a lot of voiceover in superheroes, uh, super or comic book films because it really lets you deep dive into the character a lot more, especially in Fight Club because in the narrator really tells you about his life and, uh, and everything. Uh, so I really wish they do that, but Marvel hasn't done that because it's it's not it doesn't suit for them a bit i don't know but it could be really interesting to see yeah uh, one um yeah obviously they use it for quite quite good comedic effect in deadpool and birds of prey yeah which i think yeah is, uh, really cool. that'd be really cool yeah um in deadpool 2 as well um yeah that that was really good of that one deadpool 2 was hilarious yeah. um <laughs> what so uh yeah i just really love sin city it was a bit uh, the pacing was a bit weird but overall i really enjoyed it so i would give it i do want to see what's yeah, i have this feeling again do i want to give it a 10 no i think there's something wrong so i'm gonna give it a nine yeah well i think you know what you said could have been more practical yeah more yeah, practical yeah. yeah, more practical. Could have cut down some some plots. It was a bit convoluted at times. A bit cluttered. Bit, yeah. Bit cluttered as well. Yeah. So, yeah. I actually enjoyed this film, but it was a bit cluttered. I wish there was a bit more practical effects, like, you know, in Dark Knight, or, you know, that, to get to deep dive into the reality of Sin City. But, Yeah. Great film. If you're into noir or comic book films, go ahead, watch it. Awesome. So, I have watched something this week that is near and dear to my heart. We talked about it a couple of times in the podcast, and I watch it once a year. So, it's time to watch it again this weekend. I got on my projector, put in this incredible trilogy. John, I watched Lord of the Rings. Oh heck yeah, bro! Oh heck yeah! Honestly, I just you can't. I mean, we did an episode way, way back when, episode five or something of the podcast called uh, "Favorite Trilogies," and in it we talk about uh, like The Dark Knight. Uh, I think we talk about Back to the Future and um, War Planet the Eights. But we talked about Lord of the Rings, and I just have to say, Lord of the Rings is just uh, an immaculate trilogy. It is absolutely perfect there is you know it's you just got three incredible films for different reasons they're all amazing for different reasons and i i had so much fun watching and i was watching with my girlfriend who'd never seen them before so i had a first time viewer with me and there are so many emotions it's the it, it it's this just heartbreaking story at its core about these people who whose lives have to be uprooted by something bigger than themselves and they have to go on this incredibly strenuous journey which is so so painful you know and they have to um you know go through things that at the end of the day, at the end of the day they can never come back from um you know with stories about redemption and you know uh, identity and uh, acceptance and it's all about friendship and fellowship and 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 you know ha- and helping other people and all that's great but it is done with so much style it's shot beautifully the amount of miniatures prosthetics you know the costumes the action the the look of it you know the cinematography is mad with new zealand is is just so beautifully captured you know the hobbit films i i always thought were pretty good I haven't seen them in ages but i always thought they were quite good but they used way too much cgi the the practical effects in in lord of the rings are insane you know the miniatures are you know everything looks so tangible and 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 it's it, it's incredible pa- paired with howard shaw's absolutely breathtaking score which which creates these you know we also i, I talked about this uh, in our uh, favorite uh film score episode and you know the pieces that he does are so they, they, can, they can be quiet and they can be reflective but they're so 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 much fun um and i just love the hell out of this film i, I this trilogy sorry um the action is 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 incredible and the characters and, and, and the world building all comes together to make this wonderful thing. I think it 
it changes. My my ranking of the three changes last year. My favorite was um, Return of the King, followed by Fellowship, followed by Two Towers. This year, I think Fellowship is definitely my favorite. Seeing these characters live as live, you know, have humans, have like simple fun things like a birthday party is you know really great to see before their lives get uprooted and i think fellowship is the the most well-rounded of the three it has the best character arcs and you know the 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 like for example boromir who i think is the best character like in he has like such a good arc um you know there's so many incredible things uh and you know you follow instead the other films you jump around a lot in terms of plot i think i think uh two and three the pacing isn't quite as good not that the pacing's bad far from it but i think the first uh, fellowship of the ring the the pacing is is immaculate the whole thing is just incredible return of the king is one of the best finales ever it is it could be the best finale of all time it, it it's it, it it rounds off the, the trilogy perfectly it does everything that the films like the rise of skywalker and avengers endgame and harry potter and the deathly hallows you know endings to to, to sagas and, and trilogies have really really tried to to get but none of it comes close return of the king is absolutely perfect as an ending and two towers it, it doesn't drop the ball none of them drop the ball you know the world building is always there the characters everything and the extended editions are so much better than the original and the original editions in the theatrical cut they literally cut out all of saruman's scenes in um in return of the king it's just brilliant and i love it so much um yeah lord of the rings 10 out of 10 every single film the whole trilogy 10 out of 10 i love it right um also, that's great. Uh, I need to watch it again. Uh, yeah, it's it's so good. So, I watched my favorite film of all time this week again. Oh, nice! Memento. I Memento. watched it again since 2019. That was a oof, That was a uh, nearly two years ago. Really? So, oh, wow. yeah. Uh, I've watched the film for quite a long time, and oh my god, there was a lot of details that I really missed. And it just hit me harder than the the second time I watched it. Uh, but the third time I watched it, I was like, whoa, whoa, right. So there's a lot of details that I kind of missed and I forgot how dark this one. So uh, again, I talked about the plot twist and the, ah, uh, I want to talk about the editing because the editing just works so well. It, it just really interlinks with like the, the black and white timeline and the color timeline. And Nolan's uh, storytelling just just is on another another level to explain uh, like the character of Leonard, and we are Leonard in this one because we're trying Lenny. to piece of Lenny. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I was I, I was just like, wow, this is a great film. It's, it's still my favorite. Uh. And <laughs> there's one <laughs> there's one scene that I just couldn't stop laughing and. It, okay, so in one bit of the film, it's just hilarious. So I don't know. Uh, so I want to show it to you, Tom. Uh, right. uh, so let me just get the scene up. So the scene is just, <laughs> it just made me laugh for no reason. Uh, so uh, let, uh, let's just get it then. Uh, Leonard. God. Where was it? Where's that scene? Uh, let me just. Let me just get that. I'm so so. Where is it? Okay. He, he, um. Okay, I'll explain it. So Leonard was driving down, and then he gets introduced by Dodd, <laughs> and then let uh, Leonard sees uh, Dodd, uh, and then he goes, "Hey man, what the, what the f?" And then Dodd just pulls out a gun, and then Leonard's just like, "You don't see him turning head." But he just drives off. That. It just made me laugh for no reason. It, I don't know. It's just like, hey man, what the? What are you, what are you doing? And then he just pulls out a gun. And I do not. I do not remember that. I think I must have been similar to you. I think last time I saw um, Memento was 2018, 2019, something like that. Oh, here we go. I've got it. I've got it. I'll explain. You've it got to it. You. Uh, right. Share. Share. Come on. Here you go. Okay, I send it to you. I, I forgot this was a uh, this was a scene as well. Um, I just just sent it to you. Literally called funniest movie scene. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just the way it just works. Um, so, yeah. The acting in this one is just great. Guy Pierce just did the character of Leonard just really well. Uh, and I can't think of any actor who could play Leonard just very well. So, what? Yeah. What? what? Uh, is that is that is that not cut or anything? Is that like the full scene? That is the full scene. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um. So that <laughs> it is just like what yeah. The hell what is going on? <laughs> you see what I mean? You see what I mean? Uh, he, just, he, he just drives off. He just what drives off. <laughs> he just drives away. That's that's mad. That is mad. Yeah, it, it just made me laugh. But uh, apart from that scene, I just love the rest of the film. Honestly, like the soundtrack. Oh my god, the soundtrack is just ah, it's so good. Like when you were studying or just relaxing, it just takes you a different world, and I love it. And it just works so well in, in the world of uh, Memento. And the I look back into the interview where Kristen Mel- Christopher Nolan was talking about like how the editing works mm. and the and the end the middle of the film is the ending of the film mad mad incredible it's mad that nobody had already tried that that kind of format of a film i mean as far as i know a film you know that kind of uh, is structured that way and it's mad that nobody has tried to do it since and it's really yeah cool. I, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit worried about today uh, uh, in, in cinemas, like, or a film that, you know, they could do something unique with the editing, but I feel like that's a bit gone. But we saw that in uh, 1917, you know, the editing of, like, the one shot, and we feel like that we're still watching it in, in one take. Uh, but I feel like that's a bit, you know, less used right now with the editing like how to use it creatively, like Memento. That was just that 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 is just crazy. That uh, as well. So uh, and, and the mad thing is that's only Christopher Nolan's second film. That that's just the second film that he did. That's mad. And he took that he took that from his brother's story. Mm. And there's a there's a short story on that. Uh, hey, you know, know, um, speaking of Jonathan Nol- Jonathan Nolan, Chris Nolan's brother, he's he's writing Reminiscence. Which is why, oh which is why that film feels so much like Inception and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that that's why. Okay, I'm Bonkers. excited for that. I'm, Me too. I'm excited for that. Me too. Because that looks just crazy. Hugh Jackman. Um, Hugh Jackman, come on, you you can't go wrong with Hugh Jackman. Can't go wrong with you. Can't go with you. Uh, so yes, obviously, I'm gonna give this film a ten because obviously, obviously, yes. <laughs> oh my god, it's uh. I'm glad I watched it. It's a great film. Mm. It really mm. is. Uh, I have watched two or couple films. No, wait. I've watched one film this week. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk. To, I'll talk about uh, about the next week. Uh, I got. Awesome. I, I'll be, yeah. Well, let's let's wrap it up, shall we? Yes. Thank you, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed, you know, you know what to do. Leave a like. Yeah. Because you know that Just- makes sense, doesn't it? Um. That's not my thing. I can't take that. That's from another YouTuber. Um, subscribe. At, join the ranks of our 204 or something other people. Uh, and, you know, you can hit the bell if you want to see more. We got Luca coming next week. We've got um, Fast 9 the week after. And we'll be doing Loki every week covering, you know, that show's progression. Um, and we'll be doing Black Widow in about a month. So that's cool. Um um, 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 if you want to get in touch with us, you can, you actually can do that. Um, if you email us at ourstimefilmpod at gmail.com or get in touch with us or just follow us on Twitter, Instagram, at uh, I'm Tom the Bourbon on Twitter. Uh, I'm Comedy John 42 on Twitter. <laughs> Even though you don't use it. It's on Twitter. But if you want to do a follow, sure, why, why not? Do, just do it. Yeah. To be fair, I think I use the pod Twitter more than my own Twitter. Like, I use my own Twitter to like things, but the pod Twitter is you know a lot more active than it it was before um yeah so yeah um it's hot here <laughs> yeah it's really oh hot. yeah apparently it's gonna be a hot day today so oh uh, good oh boy oh yes. boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy um 
so yeah you hey you know um i i actually ordered and it came just like the other day 24 empire magazines on off ebay um from 2013 and 2014 so i've been reading loads of articles from like about like iron man 3 and stuff it's mad oh that must be nostalgic it, it's it's so weird it's so so strange um but i used to have them all um and obviously you know that i collect the empire covers um i got ri- my dad got rid of them all um before i could take those uh, before i started collecting so like i've got them and it's it's just weird like there's there's the, this one thing right that um i actually like put on my snapchat story because it was funny um it's a it's a thing about um about star wars episode seven right and they're talking about like uh oh yeah what directors would we like to see do uh star wars episode seven and this is obviously before uh jj abrams was put as director but they put ryan johnson as one of their choices and they said he can handle sci-fi but his mic is but his voice might be too distinctive for the new universe and i think that's amazing because obviously he directed the last jedi and La- and and last jedi is so so controversial yeah yeah it's also con- controversial because a lot of people had mixed reviews about the film as well mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, the film itself is quite compl- complicated, but it it's quite unique as well. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah, I, that's it. That's it, really. Um, hmm. Yeah. Stay, I th- stay, yeah. Stay, stay safe. Stay, 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 stay safe. You gotta say that. You gotta say, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, yeah. okay, Do you have safe. something? Yeah. <laughs> stay safe. Wear a mask if you're going in the bus or going into shops or you know. Going be in safe. the bus. Please be safe. Wash your hands. Do it. Uh, and if you're seeing someone, social distance as well. If you're seeing someone, say hi from me. Hi from me. Oh, hey guys. Uh, uh, Tom and John said hi. Wait, who's Tom and John? Yeah, we're talking, we're talking to you, David. Oh, let's hope there's someone you, called David listening. Uh, uh, you're probably listening. Uh, uh, Keanu? <laughs> no, is it that Keanu or is it? I, I don't else? know. It could be. It a, better be. It better be Keanu just going. Oh wow, guys, that's wait. Uh, no, I can't do his voice. Like <clears throat> no one can. Uh, what's that voice in Cyberpunk? Wake up, Samurai. Oh, thanks, Tom and John. <laughs> that is great. That is a great podcast you have. Oh, thank well, you, Keanu. Well, there goes our uh, any chance that we'll ever have Keanu on here as a guest. <laughs> I'm so sorry, never, Keanu. It's never going to happen. It. Never going to happen. No. Um, um, Keanu, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but we like your acting in SpongeBob thing. We Sponge do. Button. And, and, um, and in uh, the League of Super Pets. Yes. And we liked your acting in John Wick. Okay, yes. we could, we could, hey, speaking of John Wick, I watched Nobody this week at the cinema, which is very much like John Wick, but with Bob Odenkirk. Oh. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> I might have liked oh. it more than John Wick, actually. What? Okay. Well, I've only seen John Wick this. once. So, like, you know. Don't take my word for it. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess then without further ado, take what you give it. Oh, ooh, you did. You want to do it? I did. Oh, okay. Take what you given. Give nothing back. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, the same. T- goodbye. Yeah. J- goodbye. Jinx. Double jinx. Yeah. No. No. <laughs>